Good afternoon from the Universal Orlando parking garage. We are headed in today because they have put in a lot of progress on the Jurassic Park roller coaster. So I'm interested to see what's changed since the last time that we were here. Also, who knows? There might be other new stuff here. You never know. Uh, it is cast member preview over at Disney for their opening. So I thought maybe this park would be less busy. It just rained too. So I'm really hoping that there won't be anybody here. Uh, I don't know. Let's go in and find out. You never know. We also might get some food to go and try it at home. The, the, the world is our oyster. We'll see what happens today. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's going to be a nice and calm day here today. So one new thing here at CityWalk is that the Universal Cinemark reopened. I don't think they're open right now, though. <laughs> I saw pictures online of the different movies that were playing, and they're like Showtime classics. Oh, here it is. Looks like they're only open Friday through Sunday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's $3 for a child and $5 for adults, and it was movies like Back to the Future, Jaws, Austin Powers, things like that. And it kind of seems like they were not expecting a lot of people to come to the movies because there's only one line of social distancing markings. And then they got signs out that say masks, face masks are required throughout the theater. Came a little bit closer because I thought maybe I would be able to see if they had movies up here, but they do not. So, I thought it was interesting that it was older movies. There is a sign inside that gives some more information about the theater reopening. On duty chief clean and safety monitor. Huh, here's another thing that's interesting. There's a sign outside that says cash accepted here, but not for snacks at this time. So you should get a gift card here if you only have cash. I came over to check on the construction over here at this, what used to be the fossil store. Nothing really new happening. They did put some dense shield in where the windows used to be there. Other than that, pretty much the same as it was the last time that we were here. I can't see anything new at least. I'm sure there is stuff going on in there, but nothing that we can see. Seems like they've cleaned up some of the opening. Like there used to be metal studs hanging down here, which it looks like they have cleaned up. Also, the last time that we were here, Big Fire was not open, but it has since opened. Not right now, but for dinner, it will be open. Gonna do a real quick pop into the Universal Studios store because right inside the door, they've got some masks that I wanna show you guys. You guys can see they've got a Ravenclaw mask and that's $6. And they've got a Gryffindor mask. And then down here, they've got a Despicable Me, It's So Fluffy mask. And I think that's all of the new stuff right now as far as masks go. Some things are back in stock like the UOAP mask and the Pride mask are back in stock now. But it looks like the 30th anniversary one is out of stock now. This is also new, a $75 denim jacket with the vintage Neon Universal Studios logo on the back. So that was $75 already, right? I like it a lot, it's nice. And these shirts are back in stock now. I think I'm definitely gonna be buying one of these later. These are $30. All right, I'm heading out. All right, our first stop is over at Islands of Adventure. I think it's done raining for the day, but at least it's not sunny and hot right now. Very nice. It definitely seems like the rain made the crowds disappear. All right, you guys know I like to stop into the U-Rest area here first get an overview of the coaster's progress. The Jurassic Park roller coaster. One thing that I wanted to point out was the last time I was like, oh, there's so many inversions. And I pointed out one of them that actually wasn't an inversion. And that's this one right here. That's not actually an inversion. Just sort of looks like one from over here. Like a ridiculous looking twisty do. I don't even know how to explain it. It bangs to the left, bangs to the right, and then bangs to the left immediately over the top of that little hill. So it's like a quick switch of directions. Here's the overview of the Jurassic Park roller coaster. Still haven't finished this top hat. They did add that guard tower back there, which is kind of ridiculous. I can't, I gotta get closer and have a look at that thing. Looks like they're building a building around it too. Oh man, and there's just like this little piece of coaster way back there that you're like, oh, there it is. It's it's way off in the distance. Just kind of shows you how long this roller coaster is. All right, let's go see if we can get a closer look at different areas around the park. So as I walk around Marvel Superhero Island, I was looking for a hand sanitizing station, like hand sanitizer, and I haven't seen any. Actually, since I walked into the park, I haven't seen any. 
I want to be on the lookout because I don't know why I haven't seen any yet. There should be all over the place, right? Yeah, it seems like the rain scared everybody away. It's only a five minute wait for Spider-Man. I wonder if I can get a ride time for Hagrid. So I haven't found any hand sanitizing stations yet or any hand sanitizer yet. And I think that has to do with the fact that it rained because also some of the bathroom signs are not out right now. So maybe they have to pull the hand sanitizers in during the rain and they're just waiting a little bit before putting them back out. We're gonna be on the lookout for more, like for the hand sanitizing stations throughout the day because I, I haven't seen one yet and I'm all the way through Toon Lagoon or I'm all the way into Toon Lagoon. See, but not all of the bathroom signs are gone. Like this one's still out, but I just passed by another bathroom that didn't have a sign. So the first place that I was able to find hand sanitizer was inside of Blondie's and that is because it's a restaurant. And like we said last time, you have to sanitize your hands as you walk into any restaurant in Universal. But I thought there would be hand sanitizing stations or hand sanitizer all around the park, but I haven't found any yet. So out here at Wimpy's, you can see there's a hand sanitizer right there, or a hand sanitizing station, but I'm not seeing them. I'm gonna keep looking. All right, headed back behind me, ship the olive. We're gonna see a closer view of the Jurassic Park roller coaster construction. Not a lot seems to have changed on this side of the roller coaster. But as we get further into Jurassic Park, a lot has changed. So we'll just take a quick look over here and then we'll head into Jurassic Park. It kind of looks like they shut down the construction site for the rain, but people are starting to come back on now. Also, we can see somebody welding up there. Excitement. Huh, yeah, look at that tower up there. That looks amazing. Huh. Yeah, nothing really changed right here. What is this thing? Never seen this before. Meteorology works? What is that thing? Do you guys know what this is? I'll be interested if somebody actually knows. I don't know, it's just kind of like here. I don't see any other ones around anywhere. What is it? All right, let's head over to the other side. That building got much larger, didn't it? Okay, let's head to the other side and have, oh, they started putting up the outside too. Starting to close it in. All right, now for real, let's head to the other side and see what else we can see. Okay, it looks like I was reading this wrong. It's Meteorology Works. And after I looked on their website, they have, this is very strange, laser tracker SMRs and laser tracker ball probes. What does that do? Their website says SMR stands for spherically mounted reflector, which really means a corner cube optic, optic centered in a ball. What? What is this thing? All right, we are just passing by Skull Island, Reign of Kong. It's only a 25 minute wait. We're headed into the Jurassic Park section of the park. Oh yeah. Look at this. Oh, there's that one piece of track that we could see from the other side that looks so far away. There it is. This is amazing. There's so much going on back here. They've started putting up more framework for more rocks. I think there's definitely gonna be a lot of scenery and rock work around this. It's gonna be a heavily themed coaster. There will be exposed track, but there's gonna be a lot of theming around the track. Looks like we've added the den shield to this building. Got a couple of little spots here where it kind of juts in and out on the outside of the building. And we've got lots and lots of roller coaster track. There's that guard tower up there on top of the building. Oh, the building is not, not surrounding it. It was just in front of it, so it looked like it was surrounding it from where we were. The more rock work there, you can kind of see that one angly looking piece of silvery metal right there. That'll be more rock work. And then of course you can see the rock work through here. This is the one piece of rock work that we've been looking at the most. And then more rocks over here. Oh, this is gonna be a really tall rock right here. Wow, there's just so much going on with this roller coaster in such a tight space. I mean, look at it. There's just, it, it looks like it crosses over itself and under itself so many times. It's kind of ridiculous. And then I think this will be another building in front here, not rock work. So you can kind of see the difference between building framing, like building steel work versus rock work steel work, like the internals of rock work. Actually, if you look right here, it kind of looks like you're gonna dive through a rock work arch. Will be what they call in the roller coaster world, a head chopper. Every time that I step somewhere else, I see more framing that the roller coaster is just diving through. 
and around. Wow. It's going to be very, very interesting for sure. Here's a nice close up of the tower there, the guard tower. That kind of showed up out of nowhere, didn't it? As we make it over here on the other side of this crane here, you can see that building where I said they were adding in the den shield. Looks like they've already started putting down a base coat of paint. I'll tell you what, every time that I'm here, it blows my mind how much more construction they've done. This is ridiculous. Look at it. Like there's more building over here that was, wasn't there before. That wasn't there the last time that we were here. Is this where the train leaves or comes back? It's curved. Is that to like match these curves in the roofs over here? What do you think it is? Also, there's just a, a, an inversion right there. Like a track comes out of nowhere, like a dive into the building. Like that's going inside of the building, right? Or right next to it? No, inside of it. Maybe that's a show scene? Oh man, how great would that be if that's where like, if that's a show scene on the roller coaster, you dive in there and there's animatronic dinosaurs coming after you or something like that, I don't know. That's just a, a theory of mine, no inside knowledge or anything like that, but it sounds like it would be cool if that's what happens. Okay, I am even more excited for this roller coaster than I was before. Cause just look at, just in this one shot, we have this dive right here. We got this curved building over here and then it kind of curves back the other way into this larger building. There's just so many buildings for me not to believe that these are show buildings for the ride. Just little sections of it, little things that'll happen during the ride. Like this can't all be cute. There's so much of it. Now the question becomes, where's the entrance? Okay, so now that I understand, like now that I've thought about it a little bit more, that's definitely the gift shop right there. The orange area is the gift shop. Like you exit the ride there. Where do you enter the ride though? Seems like it would be right here, right? Maybe that's a sign. But it would be silly for that to be back behind this other building. Maybe they're still going to add some stuff here. I don't know. But 100%, in my opinion, that'll be the gift shop back there. Like the exit through the gift shop. And once again, still no progress on the lockers for Forbidden Journey. So the last time that I was here, they didn't let me back behind three broomsticks to have a look at the coaster. We'll see if that changed this time. I think they only want you going back there if you're eating at three broomsticks or drinking a drink from Hogshead. I did check and I was able to get a virtual line pass for Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. That has an indoor queue, so I'm not gonna go through it, but it is an outdoor ride. I don't know, I'm gonna stick with outdoor rides for right now. All right, I'm back behind Hogshead now, getting a real close look at this roller coaster here. Kinda ridiculous how close it comes to this. And this was the spot that we thought was an inversion last time but it most definitely is not. And maybe this is a better view for you to see exactly what it does. Comes in, you are turning towards the left and then it rolls over top of itself as you turn to the right. And then back to the left again. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's kind of like a back and forth. Like you turn to the left, it rolls over top of itself, turn to the right, like you're diving down and then turns back to the left. Interesting. But this one next to it is definitely an inversion right there. Not only does this ride have some inversions, it also has some really hard banks where you'll feel the G's coming around these turns. But imagine you're gonna be going really fast to be able to take this bank like this. Yeah, I'm pretty interested to see this thing running. Look at how close those tracks are to each other. Can't wait till they put a train on this and they start testing it. Not gonna be for a while, but it'll be awesome. One thing to look at is once they tighten down all of these bolts down here, then we will know they're getting closer to putting a train on the tracks. Oh no, that bag in the water. Back behind Hogshead, here's something that I've never seen before, never noticed before. Inside of this window, there's all these different pipes and gauges, but that's as far as we can see in there. Actually, it kind of looks like, no, I thought maybe there was a painting of pipes back behind it, but there's not, there's just more pipes back behind it. I wonder why, like what was the thought process of the theming of that? This section of the park right in front of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure Probably the hardest section of the park to navigate while maintaining a six feet distance from everybody. There's a lot of people real close to each other here. Conductors out there checking on the Hogwarts Express, making sure it's in tip top shape, checking underneath, making sure wheels are greased. It says go ahead, set off the steam on the top. It should also be noted that even though I could have gotten a virtual line pass for Hagrid's, this is the line to check your virtual line pass at the beginning of Hagrid's. Still not seeing sanitizer 
anywhere other than at the restaurants. I've asked a few team members and they said they should be around the entire park, but I'm still not seeing them. All right, I've decided not to go behind Mythos because that's not a new view that we haven't seen today. Let's see if we can find anything else around here and then probably head over to Universal Studios. Here's one of those little things, the statue out in front of Lost Continent, like entering Lost Continent, notating the entrance to Lost Continent, got repainted. Looks real nice with some epic music playing in the background. So here's the question that I have. Is it possible to get to go food from the theme parks? Like if I wanted to get green eggs and ham, could I get that to go? Or is that not possible? Cause I don't wanna, like I don't wanna take my mask off at the theme park, but I don't have an issue getting to go food and bringing it home. Okay, so I asked them and they said that they can't do to go orders. They can just put like a plate on top of it. So you can have it covered and walk back to you like your hotel but I don't think I could bring it home with me. The lemon slush stand is back open with what looks like an old covering over top of it. Like it's, maybe they just cleaned it. They took it off to clean it. I wonder what they were doing. I'm guessing that, I'm guessing they were cleaning the covering. Also, there are these virtual line A-frames all over the park saying that you can get a virtual line pass for Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, but it's a very long line to get your virtual line check theme park tiny birds flying through the air that just doesn't have the same flow as theme park pigeon does it so i have a friend that asked me to check on the boats back to the resorts to see if they were socially distancing on there there's not enough people on that boat for it not to be socially distant but from this angle it looks like you can see social distancing markings on the seats so every other row is closed off opposite of each other depending on which side of the boat you are on does that make sense Kind of like a zigzag pattern down the boat so now that we're heading into universal studios the park where halloween horror nights takes place I wanted to mention that the blurb on the Halloween Horror Nights website about Express Pass has been taken down. So that doesn't mean that they're not going to have Halloween Horror Nights this year, but it does mean that Express Pass is in question. Oh, we can head this way because Born Stuntacular is officially open now. I'm going to head in and do a quick stop by Today Cafe and see if they have any to-go boxes that we could get meals to go. All right, I did check at Today Cafe. They said that they do have to-go containers. So Maybe on the way out, we'll grab some Today Cafe to bring home. Here's something that's interesting in today's COVID world. These fuel rod chargers, actually it doesn't look like it's turned on. Let me see if I can, yeah, maybe this one's not working. I'll check. There's other ones throughout the park, but how are these working? How are they sanitizing? Cause you swap them. Like you bring your little bar back, your little fuel rod back and you swap it for a fully charged one. So I don't know how that would work. Like, are they sanitizing them in between? Are they sanitizing this touchpad? What's going on? Born Suntacular is officially open. The next show is at 4.15, so in about 20 minutes. I'm not gonna go inside. Like I said, I'm staying, trying to avoid indoor attractions at the moment, but it is open to the public. No longer in soft openings and no longer in technical rehearsals. It certainly is quite a stark difference between Universal Studios and say Hogsmeade over at Islands of Adventure. There it comes. Scoob and the gang in the mystery machine. Actually, Scoob's not in there. Scooby will be coming out from behind us over here. Oh, very strange. Shaggy was driving today. Where's Fred? Why did Shaggy take over for Fred? Where's Scooby? I'm wondering if because it rained earlier, Scooby won't be coming out? Oh, they're doing little dances up there. Still no progress on this stand here. Wonder what it's gonna be. Fun fact, there was recently a Volvo commercial filmed here on Universal property, like on this street in New York, in Universal Studios. Been actually a lot of things filmed on this street, like a Creed video, a Jimmy Buffett video, lots of stuff. I don't know what happened to the music over here, but it's kind of eerie being in New York without any music. No, I, maybe it's just that the streets or like the roads, the walkways in Universal are much bigger than they are over at Islands of Adventure, but Islands of Adventure just feels so much more crowded than this does. Side note, I really have not seen any hand sanitizer anywhere other than at restaurants, and that's it. I guess when you go on a ride, right before you get on the ride, they give you sanitizer, but I thought when we first opened back up, there was sanitizer everywhere around the park. So I'm not seeing any now. All right, so I think I'm gonna call it a day from Universal here. I wanted to stop in today to Today Cafe and get something to go. And then I wanna go to Voodoo Donuts and get some donuts to go and then try them when we get home. Heck yeah, that was easy. There's a, there's a sandwich in there and my potato salad and I got it to go. 
So now I can head out and try to get some dessert at Voodoo Donuts. Oh, before I leave Universal Studios, I wanted to point out there is one other mask that I didn't show before, and that's this Hello Kitty mask. So that's all of the masks that they have available right now. $6 a piece or three for 15. So every single theme park that I've been to has one of these signs at the exit. That's like, we appreciate your cooperation during this unprecedented times. I always thought that they were interesting because this is literally the only time that you will see this is in this moment in history. This is a historic sign. Oh, they have removed all of the siding. Like, I don't know what you call that. It was like a shingle type material from the outside of this large building. This used to be the Island Clothing Company over here. All right. Let's go into Voodoo Donuts and get some donuts for dessert. Ooh, which one should I get? I'm definitely gonna get that pineapple looking one. What else? Ooh, that maple bacon bar is really good. No, just get the same frills. Oh, it's a ring of fire. I've never seen that. It's like a spicy one. All right, I've got my lunch. I got my sandwich and I got some Voodoo Donuts for dessert. Let's head home and eat them. Okay, so I'm back home now. I've taken a shower. It's what I do every time that I come home from Disney Springs or the theme park or the resorts. Come right in take off all the clothes, put them in the dirty clothes, take a shower real quick, and then I'm at home and I can see Jackson and Jen and everybody. And now we're going to try our food from the Today Cafe and our donuts. And I got a donut for Jen and I, uh, I got a surprise donut too. So here's what I got. This is the 30 Rock Midtown Platter. It was $12.99 before the discount. Shaved roasted turkey, smoked gouda, tomato aioli, pressed cranberry artisan bread served with potato salad. So this is a creamy potato salad. And what makes this different from other potato salads that I've had at theme parks is that this one is made with fingerling potatoes. The potatoes are not as soft as you would imagine would be in a potato salad. I would say that they're more al dente. Okay, so I've had this potato salad before and it's pretty good. Luckily, it's cold potato salad, so it made it home okay. Like, it's still cold. I have a feeling the sandwich is gonna be a different situation because it's supposed to be a hot sandwich and it's definitely not hot anymore. Hopefully it'll still be good. I think it will be, because the flavors sound delicious, but let's give it a try. Yeah, that's still really good. Wow, that aioli is what really makes this. And the roasted turkey adds like a nice what, do, what is that roasted flavor? Like a hearty flavor? I was a little bit afraid that the cranberry was gonna like shine through in the bread, but I can't taste it at all. It just tastes like normal bread. I'd be interested to try this reheated. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm just gonna eat the whole thing cold just because I'm kind of hungry right now. But next time, I think I might bring it home and reheat it and see how it tastes then. Probably still be really good. I usually get the bulls and the bears when I go to Today Cafe. I think this is my new favorite sandwich. You know what would really make this is some bacon. All right, now dinner's all done and Jackson's asleep. It's time for dessert from Voodoo Donuts. Ooh. Yeah, starring actual spe special guest Jen. Yeah, I'm here to eat some donuts. So the first one that we got is pina colada, and it looks like a little pineapple yeah. under the sea. It looks like SpongeBob's house. So this one's special for right now. I don't know if it's special for any sort of reasoning or if they're just like here's a special flavor oh for summer is it like a seasonal one yeah and then this one is key lime i'm most excited for this one it's a key lime filling with vanilla frosting and graham crackers sprinkled on top flip it over like can you flip it completely over it looks a little bit darker than their normal donuts i think it's like a cake donut Ooh, interesting because normally they, they do yeast donuts their donuts are broken up into different categories so they have cake donuts they have yeast donuts. Like raised yeast donuts, they call them. Okay. They have regular or specialty donuts. And then they have cannolos, which kind of look like cannolis, but in they're made of donuts. Yeah. So it's literally like a donut tube with like cream or some kind of filling inside. Custard, something like that. Yeah. They look good. We'll but... have to try that next time. So I'm not sure. This might be a cake donut, this key lime one. I think, well, maybe. We'll find out. Yeah. We'll and give then it a try. I got... This one, it is the ODB, named after a member of the Wu-Tang Clan, and it is a yeast donut with chocolate frosting covered in Oreo crumbs with a peanut butter drizzle. Holy cow. This thing is really big too, like look how big this is. Whoa. Yeah, you wanna see something big. Oh no. Pull out the next one. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> This one's called the Memphis Mafia. <laughs> what in the world? What is this? It's a fritter wow. with chocolate and peanut butter on it with peanut butter or like peanut crumbles on it. Is that it? Is there any other? It's just peanut and chocolate? I think that's it. Oh Let me gosh. just double check on the menu here. 
This looks so good. So is a fritter almost like a big funnel cake? I think so. Okay. So the Memphis Mafia is a fried dough with banana chunks and cinnamon covered in glaze, drizzled in chocolate and peanut butter with peanuts and chocolate chips on it. So there's banana in here? I think inside of the fritter. Oh. I don't know if it's called a fritter. It just says it's a fried dough. Okay. Well, should we try them? Oh yeah. So the very first one that we're gonna start with is pina colada. Yeah. It's like a super fluffy filling on the inside. It's like whipped cream. Oh, it's a coconut buttercream icing. That see. is so good. It has like little chunks of, of coconut in it. I thought it was hair at first, but it was coconut. Oh, that is really good. You know what it tastes like? So we had some friends come over for um, dinner or something and they're vegan. And so we, for dessert, we were going to have something with like Cool Whip yeah. and they couldn't have Cool Whip because they're vegan. So we got coconut whipped cream. Yeah. And that's what that tastes like. That is what that tastes like. Yeah. But just as a little note, don't ever be excited for any pretzel sticks at Voodoo Donut because they are always stale. Is pina colada coconut? Yeah. It's not pineapple at all? Is it coconut and pineapple? I gotta look I, this up. I don't know. Should I, I ask like... Siri? The pina colada is a sweet cocktail made with rum, cream of coconut or coconut milk. And, and pineapple, pineapple juice. juice. Okay. Uh, okay. So maybe there's like pineapple chunks in there. I'm not tasting any pineapple. Maybe the pineapple representation is just the outside. Right. Okay. Oh no, there's a big chunk of pineapple right there. This is actually pretty good. I didn't think I was gonna like this because I'm not a fan of like fruit donuts. I'm a fan of chocolate donuts. Yeah. But this is not bad. This it's is actually like very nice and kind of like uh, light and summery. I think because the inside is like a whipped cream consistency, mm -hmm. it's less heavy feeling than like Bavarian cream. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that was I good. Yeah, I, I got like a piece that. of, I definitely got a piece of pineapple in that yeah. bite. It gives it just like that nice sweetness. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I didn't think I was gonna like that, and I did. The next one we have to try is a key lime pie donut, and that one I think I'm going to love. I love key lime pie. I've never had a key lime pie donut though. All right, so we had a light on overhead. We turned that off so that you can see the donuts a little bit better. I didn't realize like how washed out everything was. Yeah. So this one is the key lime. Is it key lime pie or just key lime? I think it's key lime pie. Wow. You can't really tell, but it is like a greenish kind of, I don't know, is that jelly? Gel? That's like a custard. Custard, okay. But it's not it's not like a custard made with eggs, like the consistency of custard. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I would call this like a cream. Cream? Like a Bavarian cream. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like really limey. Ooh. Can I take a bite? Yeah. Okay. But it's definitely a cake donut. It has, you can tell it's like a, almost like a kind of spongy sort of dense more dense consistency though but let's have a bite it's not bad but i like the pina colada one better yeah which is ridiculous because you like key lime pie yeah i don't know if key lime pie translates into a donut you know what i mean yeah i think the icing might be throwing it off the, it's like a vanilla icing on top yeah Pina colada one, and I wouldn't have ordered the pina colada one. I would have ordered the key, if I was only getting one and I yeah. just like walked in there, I would have ordered the key lime one. I really think that if you're gonna go with one of the seasonal ones, I would go with the pina colada. Yeah. I think I like the flavor of the cake donut better than the yeast donut. Mm, okay. I don't know. You know what I didn't like though, is that it almost tasted like lime candy, not like yeah. lime. It wasn't yeah. like a true like lime, natural lime flavor. Yeah, I don't think it was legitimately key lime i no. think it was just like they called it key lime well key lime is sweeter than regular lime a key lime is like a, a smaller sweeter version of the lime yeah but that and tasted I... kind of more like candy lime now we're gonna try the odb yeah i'm excited for this one it looks good so i'm not normally a fan of oreos I, Oreos, there's no easy way to eat Oreo. Like it's right. it's gonna get all in your teeth. You're gonna have like crumbles all over your face. It's just, it's just how it is. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Cause like, I know that it's gonna happen and I know that it's gonna be worth it because Oreos are so delicious. So here is what it looks like cut in half. Just a regular old cake donut. Let's go. Oh wait, can I have the first bite? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Because we started out with filled donuts, yeah. this one tastes kind of dry. Mm -hmm. 
Because there's no filling. What if it had a filling inside? What would the filling be? I would imagine peanut butter or chocolate or something. Yeah? Yeah. I think it needs a filling. It is still good. Like, I'm still going to eat it. I think that I made the statement, I don't like Oreos. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think I need to dip my Oreos in peanut butter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. (laughs) I think that might be the, the... This is good. The way to do it. Peanut butter is, like, inherently dry, though. Like, it is something that just, like, dries your mouth out. Yeah. So, I think that's not helping my case as far as, like, it not being super moist. The donut itself is is nice. It is kind of dense. The actual Oreo cookies are, like, a little bit stale. Are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are. They're soft. Mm -hmm. Plus, I brought them home, like, hours ago. Which is fine. (laughs) But, like... This is good. I do like this donut a lot. But like, what if it had a filling? Mm-hmm. That would be, that would be good. I bet you you could just use like Oreo filling as the as a filling. Mmm, cookies and cream. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what it is. Yeah. No, I think that would be so good. So it's a cake donut, chocolate glaze, crushed up Oreos, peanut butter drizzle. If you could fill that with anything, what would you fill it with? What do you think would taste the best? Yeah, leave would you us pick, a comment. Yeah, like, would you pick a fruit? Is there a fruit that should go in there? No. No? Well, I'm asking them. Okay. <laughs> um, I do like the idea of cookies and cream, though. That's 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 where the that's the money. And now... Here's the big boy. <laughs> this is well, the Memphis Mafia. I can't believe it. This is a fried dough well, with bananas. Mm-hmm. Uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon, chocolate... Peanut butter, crushed peanuts, and chocolate chips. So the banana and the cinnamon is cooked into the fried dough. So I'm kind of curious to see like how will that taste. Well, let's show. So here's really quick. This is the what the inside looks like. So you can kind of see the little pieces of banana. So that's, I mean, this is like a big boy. Like this is like a big donut. Big boy. Yeah. So we just cut off a little pieces. <laughs> All right, do you have any any banana pieces in yours? Mm-hmm. Oh. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's a lot of flavors that go together. I could do without the cinnamon. Mm-hmm. I'm not a huge cinnamon fan. I'm not really sure why the cinnamon is there. Yeah, I'm not either. I think if you were doing just a plain old banana fritter, mm-hmm. yeah, cinnamon makes sense. Does it? Because, yeah, bananas and cinnamon. I know apples and cinnamon do. I was like, wait, when have you ever had bananas and cinnamon? I've never had that. Maybe I never have. It's been so long since I've had Voodoo Donuts. I remember this one being my favorite when we first tried them. But I don't know if it is. I do like the fried dough. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So it's different than the cake donuts. It's different in that it has like a crust. Yeah, it like has like a crunch. Yeah, there's more texture, more crunchy. I also like that it has the peanuts, like the crushed up peanuts on it. That yeah. gives it another like just layer of another like layer texture. Of crunch. Yeah. But I really think like get rid of the cinnamon. Yeah. Then, because it's kind of overpowering. It is very cinnamony. Like there's a lot of cinnamon flavor in this. So if you had to rate these donuts that we had. Pina colada number one. Right? Yeah, it was really good. That was so good. ODB number two. Yeah, that was delicious. I think this one, number three. I think so too. And then number four was the key lime, which stinks because the key lime was what? That's the one I was excited about. We were excited for the key lime. Yeah. Isn't that funny how that works out sometimes? That's why you always got to try what you think you want and then something else. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like trying the donuts. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Universal to check on the Jurassic Park roller coaster construction. It blows my mind how much has been built up since the last time that we were there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I then you didn't get to see this, but I think I picked out the gift shop. Oh, okay. And, like, the exit to the ride. There's, like, there's buildings there and, like, turns and... Uh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I cannot wait to ride this ride. I think it's going to be fantastic. And I'm really hoping that my, like, my theory comes true that there are some indoor elements and, like, show scenes I mean, on this ride. That would be awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of buildings, <laughs> and they put up that guard tower too, which showed up overnight, which seems mind-boggling to me. 
So they're just like, man, guard tower over here now. <laughs> and they're still not done with the track yet, but it is looking good. As far as the actual park goes, not a lot of people there today, especially after the storm, except in Hogsmeade. Oh, yeah. Kind of a ton of people in Hogsmeade. And I think that when we saw the line for Hagrid's, I think what we were seeing was after the storm, the ride was down, and then it finally came back up, and people were trying to get on and use their virtual line passes. And so the line to get their virtual line pass checked was very long. Oh. So, yeah. But all in all, a fantastic day. You know what my favorite part of the day was? What? Eating donuts. Oh, yeah, the donuts were good. <laughs> yeah. They were really good. And the food was good, too, from Today Cafe. Donuts, a little bit more of a highlight than the, <laughs> than the sandwich was. But still, sandwich was good. So all in all, a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to help. So today's organization that we want to shine a spotlight on is called OneSite.org. And we wanted to say thank you to Daniel for sending this over our way so that we could learn more about it. And they provide eye exams and glasses to those in need. So one site is an independent nonprofit committed to eradicating the global vision care crisis in our lifetime because clear sight does so much more than help us see clearly. It helps us perform better in school, earn more and connect more deeply with one another. And it also says that their mission is to bring eye exams and glasses to the one in seven people on our planet who lack access to vision care. Oh, so that's, I didn't realize that so many people are not getting adequate vision care and not being able to see is huge. Right. So that I just, I had no idea. And this really opened my eyes like to this problem. So I hope that you will check out the link in the description down below and learn more about what one site does and how they help out the community. So talking about it with your friends and family, sharing the link with your friends and family definitely helps to get the word out about one site. If you can donate, that's great too. If not, just talking about it really helps. So um, thank you so much for checking out the link. Yeah, and thank you guys for watching this video.